Hey guys, welcome back to Crystal Intuition. My name is Melissa and today's video is going to be another paranormal experience video. Today I'm going to be sharing you something that happened to me when I was 14 years old. So when I was 14 years old, I saw a really, really scary demon. I've lived in fear for a couple of years after that and I've noticed, I think it was last year when I started going through all these spiritual awakenings, I stopped being afraid of demons because I realized that they cannot hurt you if you don't give them any power. So they feed off fear. If you don't give them fear, you're going to starve them. They're going to go away. So I know a lot of you are probably not going to believe the stories that I share because it is extreme. My family is like a magnet for paranormal experiences or so it seems. I'll also be sharing some of my family members' experiences as well. So, if you don't believe the videos, just see as it like entertainment purposes and we'll just move on from there because I know not everybody is going to believe. Hopefully the videos can help a couple of people through their experiences. So today, today's video, what happened when I was 14 years old? Because it was a really interesting event. It happened like years ago. I think it was like six years ago and I can still remember it like it was yesterday. So we had like a party this like one day. My parents had this party. They invited a couple friends over and everyone was just having a great time. So before I actually get into the story, I'm just going to tell you guys, in South Africa here, we have something called load shedding. So it's just like this wonderful thing where we just have random power outages and it can last anywhere from 2 to 12 hours without power. And uh, I mean, one time it was like out for, I think, around 24 hours the one time. It's just, it's not a fun thing. Um, like they just put random parts of the city off the power and it's just, it's just really, really crap thing to go through. So that's going to be important in this video. So we were having this, the, this party and whatever, it was around 11 and 11 ish. Like I, I decided to go to bed. I mean, it was like over a weekend so I can sleep late. So I decided I was tired, I'm, I'm gonna go to bed, I don't wanna be in the big people's, like, the grown-ups conversation anymore. I decided just to just go to bed, luckily they, at this point, they calmed down a little bit so that I could actually get some sleep because they tend to be loud with the music and stuff. So at this point, it calmed down, I decided, let's go to bed, I'm gonna go to sleep. I went, I put on my, my PJs and I just got into bed and I went to sleep. At this point, um, we had two dogs. We just got it, the, got the second one. Um, so back then, it was only two. So the dog that was my dog at the time, she's now my mother's dog, but at that time she was my dog and she was not in the room with me. She was outside, she likes people, so she was out where the par party was. So the puppy, we just got him, it was still a puppy. So. It was the male dog. She was the female. This was the male puppy because my mother decided let's breed the dog. It was like Yorkshire Terrier, so she wanted to breed them. So we got the little puppy. He was in my room because he was still a puppy. My mother said, take him with you when you go to bed. So he was like under the bed in his little like doggy bed. So I went to sleep. Everything was fine. I was feeling happy. Everything was just great. I mean, it's weekend when you're in school. Weekends are always fun. So I went to sleep, didn't really worry about anything. Everything was fine. I mean, I was expecting good dreams. And when you dream, you also lose like sight of time. But I was just, I fell asleep. It just felt like sudden because I didn't remember dreaming anything else that night. Suddenly, I just had this dream. So also, before I tell you guys about that, we live in in this yard. My grandparents' house was like in the front and we live like in a little house, cottage thing in the back of the yard. So that's important because that big house of my grandparents really, that place is like haunted beyond like that really creepy house. So that's just important because there is a demon in that house. It's He still resides there to, to this day. So 
in the when I dreamt, I dreamed it was just really sudden. I switched into this horrible nightmare. I dreamed that I was in that house in the little bedroom with the two that at that time it was still two beds. Me and my cousin used to sleep there when we wanted to sleep over at my grandma's house. So that room is especially one of the most haunted places in that house. So yeah, it's fine. Make the haunted bedroom the kids' bedroom. It's fine. Yeah, it's totally good. So yeah, it was the most haunted room in the house and I don't think a lot of people knew that at the time as well. So what happened is in the nightmare, I was in that room. It was pitch black. I tried to look over for a source of light in the dream and I saw this figure standing across the room at the foot of the bed. It was a figure, it was completely black, it was a very very tall figure. It seemed to have like a cloak, like almost like that Grim Reaper vibe, like that black cloak, but where his face was it, it seemed like he didn't have a face, it was like hollow. But I could see two faint lights where the eyes are supposed to be and at the point of the hood I saw like two horn things coming out there. It was just like creepy. I didn't like that at all. And he started talking to me. He said something along the lines that he was going to kill me, he was going to hurt my family, he was going to destroy my entire family and take everything I love away from me, including the dogs the my parents he was gonna destroy basically my whole life it came up to that and I'm not gonna even quote it word for ver word for word because it was just the terrible thing I mean if someone threatens to kill you that's fine right but if they tr threaten to kill your family then you're like now shit's getting real so I was terrified and at this point I woke up and I was pitch black I was like Am I? What is happening? It, I was. It was just dark in the, in the like dream. Now it's dark. I was freaking out. I mean, it was a scary nightmare. And then, I mean, like I'm a rational person. I was like, oh, it's just, it's just load shedding probably. I was like, I wanted to, like, get over to the bedside table to get my phone. And just when I like, try to reach for the phone, it caught my eye. That same figure from my dream was standing in my room, across the room, and I was frozen with fear. I just sat there, staring at that thing for what felt like eternity. It was probably like 10 minutes, but it felt like hours. I didn't know what to do. I was frozen. I tried to scream. Nothing would come out. And then the puppy was under the bed. I saw the puppy crawling out. I mean, it was dark, but like the moonlight was very bright that night, so I could kind of see a little bit inside the room. And the puppy started crying. I mean, I'm a dog person. If you hurt my dogs, I would like, I'd hurt you. You understand? I like, I'm really like attached to my animals. And when the puppy started crying, I was like, oh no, shit's getting real. I just analyzed where the puppy was exactly. I looked at the figure. I was like, you're not getting this puppy today. I was like, grab the puppy. And then I put it under my covers, put myself under the covers and I started praying so hard. I just kept praying and I kept praying and I could felt that presence of that darkness coming closer and closer and closer. I could feel that on my skin. I it was just like horrific. I started praying harder and harder by the minute. And then I felt this push and somehow I managed to get out a scream. My mother and her one friend, they both came rushing in. She worked, um, my grandma's friend, oh, my mother's friend, sorry, she worked at the church. So she knew how to cleanse a room against demons and stuff with olive oil and salt and stuff with the green leaf. So she felt that thing. I think she saw a glimpse of him, but when I opened my eyes and my mother, there was the flashlight, like, he was gone. It was gone. It was over. I was, like, shaking. I couldn't really tell them what was going on. I just... They just knew something bad was going on. So my grandma's friend, she went and cleansed the whole room. She just took a bowl with, like, olive oil and salt and a green leaf, and then she made, like, little crosses everywhere on the wall. 
and at every door, every window, every corner of the room. So she also did her prayer thing. My mother took me into the kitchen and we, like kitchens have like built-in counters, right? So my mother took me, she like put me like near the counter and she made me like, I think it was like uh, sugar water or something for the shock. And I was standing near the counter and I was like shaking so badly that the countertop actually vibrated. If you stand, stood like a meter away, you can actually hear the tabletop like vibrating like that. I was like shaking uncontrollably. My mother even give, gave me some medication for like that severe anxiety that I had because she was afraid that I was gonna have a panic attack, which I was kind of already in the middle of. So after that, my mother gave me a cross and a Bible. She put me in her bed along with her friend's child as well. He was quite younger than I was at the time. I think he's like around, uh, I think four years, maybe more younger than I was. So he went to sleep there as well. And my brother was there as well. So I went to sleep there. I went, at this time it was, I think, cause I woke, I think the nightmare stuff was around like just past three. I went to sleep in my mother's bed around a quarter past four that morning. I went to sleep with that Bible in my arms. I woke up with that Bible in my arms. I didn't go near my room for two weeks. I didn't sleep there. I didn't go in there. If I wanted clothes, my mother would have to go in with me. I never, I didn't, I didn't, I walked circles around my own room. Uh, so I slept in my mother's room for two weeks because of that. And I mean, I was 14, so I was already in high school. So that was kind of a really, really disturbing experience to have at that age. I mean, it's something I'm fighting you. I mean, I'm that kind of person who can watch a horror movie alone in my room with like the door shut, the lights off. I'm not a person who scares easily. But at that point, I mean, it was the first time in like a really long time I've actually saw a figure that dark and I've never felt a prison so, so dark before that day. So when I was finally had that courage to go back into my room when I, I slept there for a couple of nights. I felt really uneasy, but eventually I settled back into my own room. This experience to this day scares the living hell out of me because I mean, what if I couldn't scream? What if that thing actually decided to harm me? I mean, at that point I was so afraid. He fed off my fear. I mean, anything could have happened, but luckily it wasn't worse than it was. I had a couple of bruises on my arm, like, but very faintly, but it, like where that energy just pushed me and that thing didn't even like physically touch me. So I didn't, I don't even want to know anymore what could have happened. Thankfully, it wasn't worse than it was. And to today, I'm not afraid of them anymore at all. One of them can stand in front of me. I'll be like, hey, uh, you don't belong here. Get out of my room. Um, because like they can't really do anything to you as long as you don't like call them out or like you have to show respect to, to, to stuff like that because if you're gonna start throwing curse words at him it's gonna piss it off and you're not gonna want to know what happens then so yeah just be respectful and you can actually tell them to leave you alone in the name of God and they by the law of the universe they are supposed to abide by that so that story was extremely, extremely scary. And I hope you guys enjoy this, this story time. If you like this video, please consider liking this video, commenting and subscribing to this beautiful growing family. So that's all for today's video guys. Bye.